and welcome to this very special episode of the Combo Chronicles. I feel like we need golf claps for that entrance. <laughs> <laughs> we are gathered here today, tonight, on this occasion, to commemorate and commemorate and sometimes <laughs> celebrate on the year that was 2018 in comics. With me tonight, we have uh, okay. thank you. Um, anyway, with me tonight, we have uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're like six seconds in, we already went off the rails. All right, it's like, all right, this, this is all going badly. This is all going badly. We have uh, we're having a lot of fun tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, you, you may get to hear the 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 behind the scenes chatter on, on this uh, while we were. As to, to secondarily dub the Waiting for Tim Talk podcast. But right <laughs> um, anyway, let me go ahead and get through the, the blow through the information uh, introductions. In that, our man illegal, Brooklyn's finest, the man behind the soundboard, Agent underscore 70. What's up, everybody? We go quick now. Yeah. Uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter, you can find him at that, Agent underscore 70. And PCN underscore dirt. Yay. Hi, everybody. How are you? You know, <laughs> Mame Supreme, the Arcade Wrangler. Um, I don't know what we're gonna <laughs> something new every time. Ten count, I don't, not not ten count. That's that's a long little thing. But anyway, uh, Agent Underscore. Excuse me, sorry. Uh, PC Underscore Dirt on Twitter, <laughs> Instagram. Uh, oh, I'm, 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 uh, PopCultureNetwork.com, PopCultureNet on Twitter. Uh, I need comments.com. Was that uh, that new choice mail.com? That new choice mail.com. Yeah. And whatever that new Vine takeaway thing is going to happen, uh, we're going to keep plugging that until it happens, or if it doesn't happen. And, and then I, they won't approve me for it, probably, and I'll never be <laughs> You're like, oh, this guy, I don't know. Yeah. But um, but I am your host, Ryder Cat. Um, you can find me at Ryder Cat on Twitter, Instagram, all that kind of stuff. News News Need on Twitter. Uh, hopefully, there's going to be a site that sometimes I keep threatening people with that, but uh, just people, you know, whatever. Um, and uh, CB caps are on Instagram for you know comic book panels of, of my likings. Uh, again, like I said, we are here to talk about 2018 and the comics that were with our year in deliberations. We need another name for that, I don't know. Uh, the clicks of the year, which we will get to, and all that kind of good jazz. But guess what, folks? You can find this podcast at uh, cspn.us. Do it today. Uh, you can also subscribe at uh, Google Play, iTunes. Uh, you can go to Spotify. We're on there too. You can go to the CSPN SoundCloud. <laughs> well, okay, way ahead of you. Um, yeah. And- okay. So, so Tim, Tim Dog obviously is not here, and he keeps like popping up. You keep hearing. I know everybody's going to hear those little bing things going on in the background <laughs> we're talking to him right now trying to figure out what happened to him but uh yeah so you know he's 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 a uh, he's um got he's got baby duties and he's been working his behind off so you know you gotta you gotta cut him for that so we understand if we misses this one which is it's sad because that's breaks tradition but hey you know what you got other things going and on somebody yeah. wanted to play appropriate music so you know <laughs> but life, uh, happens. life comes at you fast that's all you know but um now that, that all that stuff out of the way, uh, let us get into our um, categories, starting with most disappointing comic book. Folks, this has been a year, uh, good or bad, in comics and, in, in, you know. And TV, related TV. And TV and, yeah, not kind of good stuff. So, you know, some of the stuff we're just going to be flying, flying by because it's it is what it is. But, um. Hopefully enjoyable. So, like I said, most disappointing comic book, TV, movie, comic TV, but comic book TV show, right? So, yeah, TV show. Yeah. All right. So the first Tim. one. Oh wow! So, so Tim just put something in, again, and uh, no, it it kind of uh, it kind of piggybacks on what my pick was. My pick specifically for most disappointing comic book TV show was Daredevil season three on Netflix. And Tim's pick is actually all of the Marvel Netflix shows because they're all canceled. Wait, hey, there's a sound effect for this. There's a sound effect for this. Ah! 
my only thing with that is like I would agree with that, except for I feel like I don't know that the shelf life of those shows were vastly approaching anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reason why I have what I have on mine is because I'm not caught up with those shows, so that's you know just gotcha. A ridiculous oh, so thing. so that's an I don't know the IDK. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I thought that wasn't the like initials of some show I hadn't heard of. <laughs> no, no, no. It was a like platform. International <laughs> Doctor Claw or something. All right, like no. They well, that that um Inspector Gadget marathon was going on on Twitch a couple few weeks, a couple weeks ago, but nah. That's that's so- that, that sounds like that TKO comic series, like something like the 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 Professor Fang or something like that. When you when you were uh, making up that title just now, Dirt. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, but very quickly, I was wondering real quick, did you guys all watch Daredevil? Nope. Dirt, you didn't get it. Okay, I don't want to spoil it, but one of the re- one. Of I the- won't. I won't. I won't watch it. So. All right. Well, ult- ultimately, my biggest beef with the season was that Daredevil Matt Murdock himself doesn't actually ever put on his costume, ever. And supposedly there was a reason for that. That that spawned all out of um, Defenders, but I don't know. Right, but even so, you can't go the whole season. Don't put the the hero of the show in his own costume. So, uh, for you, you know. So that that was uh, my biggest beef with that. So our next category. Oh wait, 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 wait! Oh, wait, wait, wait a second. Dirt has, dirt has beef. Dirt has beef. You know, and and, and the I'm thing is, it, so. I only there's only one comic book based TV show I actually watch, and I don't watch any of the others. So it, it really could have been anything I could have put because I feel let down by every single show in one way or another. Um, but I specifically chose Titans, the new one on the DC uh, Universe app. Uh, is it DC Universe? DC Experience? Yeah, DC, right, Whatever. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> that that show is like to me the the example of one why I really don't like most of these shows is because it is so like dark and brooding and, and grim and gritty, emo and <laughs> and trying to be Beverly Hills nine hundred two one zero at the same time. The you know, it's like everybody's beat up, but they still their hair looks good. You know, and I it, like it was one of the foundations of of that app, that whole DC universe. Like we're starting our own thing; it's going to have comics and movies and TV shows and whatever. And you end up getting like two dozen comics. That's all you get. You end up getting like um, the the Super Friends live action special from 1978, the Wonder Woman TV show. Um, you know, like stuff that you get in the three dollar DVD bins at Walmart. Right. Um, and then you get. Stuff like Titans, which like you just, I, I watched a trailer for it and I'm like, like, I, I don't, I don't want this. Like, this is not what I want. I don't want to pay for this. Like, I don't want to touch this. This is terrible. Um, I, I don't need a, a Robin that spouts the F word. You know, that's not what I'm looking for in my superhero TV shows. So yeah, not only do I not like the show, but I ended up canceling my membership to the app. Wow! Um, because it is just not what I wanted. You weren't you weren't here last week when he because you think he did mention that last week. Yeah, I was under the weather last week, so I didn't oh. make the show. Holy cow! That's a new. That's that's sh- not shocking because like 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 you were saying, dirt. Um, the the current content you know may not support the cost of the subscription. So, mm. uh, well, I mean, if you're 14 I mean, for you, to, right. to yeah if you're 14 to 22 you might not care about the 7.99 a month you might like the show and you might like the the two dozen comics for me for paying that that price i wanted like marvel unlimited yes like i wanted uh, you know at least a good 40 year chunk of dc from the beginning or the most recent or in the middle or you know whatever and instead it's like here's some doom patrol issues here's six issues of teen titans and read them in a, in in three weeks because then we're going to take them all out and wow put all new stuff in here's one issue of an event <laughs> i did not know i did not know i mean it sounds like you guys had you know had hashed it out last week but uh, i did not know that that was the case well and the, you know, the problem is it has really great potential because it, it is available on your tv right and the comics being able to read them you know, when it first launched, it did have some old books from like the 40s and 50s kind of mixed right. in with Batman and a whole bunch of old Batman stuff. And so to sit on my couch, pull out my Roku remote and to read comics on, you know, a giant um, 
you know, yeah, flat screen, right? Big screen HD TV was great, but then after 20 minutes, it's like there's no other comics, mm. you know. And a lot of times, it, it's just like like Roddy just said, they'll give you one out of an event. You know, you get one issue that's a Legends tie-in. You know, it's like, well, that's can I can I read Legends? Like that would be a fun thing to sit here and read. Nope, you can't yep. have that. But here's this one issue of uh, Wonder Woman. You know, that's a tie-in. Okay. So the so, season three just came out. Can we get the original season of uh, a series of uh, Young Justice? Although they may have put that in there, as I'm as I'm saying that word, but it doesn't really matter. But they, right. to be fair, they are putting some stuff in there on the on you know like um like some of the old uh, animated movies and stuff like that. But they're still like the they, they take stuff out mm -hmm. though when they put right. stuff in, and that that unlike the Marvel Unlimited, that really bothers me. And and it's kind of coming too, and they are trying to do it. Like they're they're, I think the new super, uh, the Reign of Superman things coming out. They're they're putting that on there, you know, when it comes out in theaters and stuff like that. They're doing that's potentially good stuff. But like I said, like like Dirk said, with the books and whatnot coming coming and going and stuff, they keep taking off and doing that. I was like, come on, dude. Well, and even a lot of the animated stuff I haven't really liked in the last few years. Like when they did Killing Joke. Mm -hmm. And they had to put the whole subplot with Batman Wonder. and Batgirl, right. you know, like, oh my gosh, like, I don't know. Like, well, you can still watch all of the Batman and the animated series, right? Yes, mm. that is there. And Superman one and a couple other, you know, just stuff. And the Justice League ones, right? Uh, yes, I believe that is on there. But I feel like a lot of people who desperately wanted that stuff, they probably already have it on DVD or. Bit torrent or you know whatever over the the last you know fifteen years that the technology has been out there you know right. well it was also showing in on certain platforms too like uh, Amazon Prime yeah, yeah. <laughs> until recently so oh so they did put the the original Young Justice series on uh, the comic book on there huh. oh all right okay but, whatever but hey back to uh, twenty eighteen folks yeah right <laughs> um, let us move on. So we're on our most disappointing comic book movie, and we have uh, some agreement amongst the panel. I, I, I will go ahead and say that I have not seen this movie, but I'm just going to keep my name. Um, See, I haven't seen it either. That's the only reason why I have no vote on it. I refuse. I refuse to watch it. But um, <laughs> and and so Agent Seventy and I both said Venom. Um, I actually watched it at the behest of my cousin's children, uh, one of whom includes my godson. And uh, yeah, I was kind of just not happy about having to sit there. Mm. Now we have gone uh, during the course of the, the last year when this book, when this, um, when this movie was talked about and came about, and whatever the case may be, leading up to it, and even after it came out, the the, the one prevailing question was why. Mm. And that's the whole for me, and that is why my, I put that in there. Why I put it in there is that because, and the reason why I said why, sure, it, as a standalone here movie, it's some people say it's pretty good. Okay, it doesn't tie to the source where it came from. There being, like, yes, you can make a standalone Venom movie, and they did, but I'm like, without it being tied to Spider Man, that's just lame. <sighs> Well, you know, it's all you know. Most of it is economics. They have to well, you know, utilize their license. So, and 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 my problem is that they had to do. They felt like they had to do it as an origin story, mm -hmm. whereas you could do a Venom movie in a quote unquote Marvel universe that doesn't you know cross over into any of the other properties if you just set it ten years after he became Venom. Because then you're dealing in a time frame when he doesn't have to be around Spider-Man, you know. So you could have, if you have Eddie Brock, um, you know, he's he's homeless, he's a drifter, he doesn't remember who he is. The thing is there. You start to see flashbacks of when he was Venom, and it just shows, you know, carnage of in the past, but it doesn't actually show Spider-Man who he's fighting. It just mm -hmm. shows him going nuts and fighting and whatever. I mean, you can kind of bypass that whole spider-man thing without having to rewrite the entire history of the character right. but instead they decided well you know we've got to do it we've got to do an origin story and since we can't touch any of this stuff then we have to just totally make up a whole bunch of new random stuff that doesn't make right. any sense like even in suicide squad like they and granted they did 
I mean, Batman did actually show up, but beside the point, they alluded to it more as much and more than they actually had him in there. Mm. So mm-hmm. they only have done it, you know, which is like uh, anyway. That is my that, that was my thing. And Derek, you had I put in Gotham by Gaslight, the animated uh, mm-hmm. movie DC put out. Um, and, and here's the big thing is that the comic, when it came out, the art was done by Mike Mignola and he's my favorite artist of all time. So they said, Hey, we're going to take this book. And it was the book that actually got him a lot of notice. I mean, it was the book that, that put a lot of uh, eyeballs on his artwork and made people go, Oh, this guy does good, dark Gothic horror stuff, um, which eventually led him to Hellboy. And so they said, Hey, let's make this into an animated movie, but let's use the most plain generic animated style that we use with all of the DC movies where everything just looks plain outline garbage and not have any influences of his actual art style in the movie at all. Gotcha. All righty. And uh, finally for this category and most disappointing comic book movie, uh, Tim dog 98 says that uh, Deadpool two disappointed him the most. Which I'm curious to see why, because I've heard, well, I, you kind of wonder the people who actually like that movie. I, I haven't seen it, again, I haven't seen it, so I, can't, I have no, you know, whatever about it. And I'm sure, I'm not sure why I didn't watch that one. Um, cause I've heard I so haven't much. seen it either. It was yeah. it was one thing, like, I, I liked the first <laughs> one, but I liked it as a one-time thing. Right. And when they said they're making a sequel, it's like, I don't really want to experience that again. Like, it was mm. fun as its own thing, but I don't need to go back there. And I kind of feel, feel like, I don't know, again, I haven't, they, they would probably have, hey, you remember this movie? It's more of this type of situation. Right. I don't know yet because I haven't watched it, but it's like, uh, I can definitely tell you that it didn't disappoint me that as much, probably because I got a kick out of seeing additional characters being brought to life on screen. And it was those characters that kind of made the movie for me, not so much the Deadpool parts. Oh, which, by the way, the spinoff X Force movie has been canceled. Oh well, it's too bad. Yeah, had had we had we had a normal show, we would have talked about that. But I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Which I, at some point we'll do. It'll probably be next week, uh, I would imagine. But yeah, we'll do like a quick recap of them. Well, actually, and I will say while we're still on the movie such situations, we know uh, the new spider, and this is will be going on to something later on in, in the show. But we know that Spider Man's Far From Home trailer at, at the time that we're doing this is, is out, and there was a couple of. Uh, Captain Marvel ones and Delicate Class to start it, but that's 2019, so don't, don't worry about that. Anyway, no, um, and a Ghostbusters teaser, and a Ghostbusters just started right and John Wick out. three, but you know, oh yeah, that that also happened today. Yes, the uh, movie poster and teaser trailer, so we know, <laughs> and we'll be talking about it. But favorite comic book TV show? Uh, all right, well, we all have different choices Roddy's really not up to date apparently on comic book tv shows i mean i could go back and say well yeah i mean i could go back and go back on stuff but it's, it it wouldn't be fair because like i said i, I it's all good on you know the 2018 so so my pick for favorite comic book tv show was actually luke cage season two i i liked it it was pretty entertaining um I wasn't so keen on the ending, but overall, the you know the the show was a lot of fun to watch. It was hard to believe that it was actually in 2018. It felt like it was 10 years ago. It was in <laughs> June, so that's how long 2018 felt. Um, Dirt had his own pick, and that and I'd say, well, maybe season three will make things better. Oh wait, oh wait. <laughs> Hmm. Actually, I think it's funny. Tim, his pick for favorite TV show is oh, Titans. Exactly. I remember him saying something like that though when or, or on Twitter. So on, you know, um, so that's interesting. So, but, but yeah, but he he likes a lot of those CW superhero shows. I anyway, it's a generational I, thing. I hate all this. So. It's, it's a awesome. generational thing. You know, <laughs> you young kids, <laughs> your Titans TV show. <laughs> to be fair, he is the youngest of all of us. Exactly. That is another thing we're gonna put. But now I did watch some of this show for Dirt's pick. Um, yeah, um, and this this show actually, I watched this with my son. Um, mm-hmm. He actually really loved it too. Uh, and and what we would do is, uh, you know, once a week we'd order pizza for lunch, and we'd sit and eat pizza and watch uh, the new episodes of Krypton. And we both really liked the show a lot. And it was, I think, 
part of the reason why I really like Krypton so much is that it's so divorced from any possible source material because it is the time before anything that's really been covered. So it is set like 200 years before the time of Kal-El's parents. So you're dealing with, uh, you know, history of Krypton, not anything that crosses over into anything you would have read. So they've got this ability to kind of build up the society and to put the story together and to do all this stuff without it, without, cause, cause the problem I have with a lot of the shows is that the shows are wrong, mm -hmm. right? Cause like, I know the comics. And so when I'm watching the shows and they do something, it's like, I tried to watch flash, but after about three fourths of the season of flash, I was just like, it's driving me nuts. Like how many things are wrong? It's like, they keep introducing the characters and I'm like, that's not who that person is. Um, but the great thing about Krypton is they only really had one character and that's Adam strange. Yes. And, the only reason why Adam Strange is there is because the Zeta Beam is popping him in and out. You know, he's basically traveling through space and time, uh, and he ends up in the past on Krypton. Uh, and well, and I guess there's a villain um, that, as the series goes on, Brainiac makes an appearance, and and they got Brainiac so right, and and that like really blew me away when they showed him the way he looked, the way he talked, the way they did the special effects and the makeup and everything was perfect. Um, so there was so much about that that I really enjoyed. And it also has the added bonus of because it's in the past, uh, because there's this threat against Krypton, you know, before it explodes, um, that one reason why Adam Strange is there is because Superman is like disappearing in their time stream because there's something going on with the time travel and whatever. So there is a threat to like current modern continuity, but the show being set in the past doesn't have to worry about other characters crossing over and messing up different character histories and whatever. So you have a connection without there really being a connection and you get the ability for all these characters uh, to develop and these people to appear without it really feeling like, you know, again, like it's a bad, like the, the Netflix adaptation of a manga, you know, it's like right. it, without it feeling like they've warped it into something terrible, I still feel like it's true enough to the idea um, without it messing a lot of stuff up. And it does have some nice stuff where when they use the, you know, the TV screens, the console screens, the keyboards, you see writing um, on stuff, they use that, that font that was always used in the comics for Kryptonian writing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that has all the little symbols and, you know, it's like a Superman shield, but like a figure eight in it. And that's, and, you know, in place of the letter O they used to do that in the comics in the fifties. And you had like a little chart and you could actually read, you know, what the words were by looking at the chart. They use that actually in the show. So, uh, you know, again, like this is for me, the right way to develop something into a different medium is because you don't have to fart all over the original material, trying to adapt it and update it, whatever. It's like, okay, let's go somewhere. The, the comics never have, and explore that and do right. something new and interesting with that. So I, I really love the show. Right. I mean, you know, you obviously, uh, you know, you have to sympathize because, uh, you know, every showrunner is thinking, well, we don't have any recognizable characters. What's drawing people in, but it's, you know, it's cool that the draw is actually that, as you said, they're drawing on stuff that really hasn't been tread upon before that, you know, no one, you know, they're actually blazing that particular trail. I mean, it's not unlike other shows, well, not other shows, but at least a show or two hasn't done it in the past. Like, I mean, I know uh, BSG kind of did that, well, tried to do that with another show, a spinoff show of theirs by going into the past and, and kind of alluding to some stuff that might happen. It sounds like this one's doing it a little bit better. Probably some same, some of the same people are attached. I was going to ask if this was getting a season two, but apparently it is, and I see who's going to be on said season two and, and a couple of things that have happened during the course of the season. So, interesting. Um, so, oh, wait, uh, are we done with that? Are we, yeah. I said no, because I'm not caught up. So yeah, we're done with that. So we're going to go to the next uh, category with favorite comic book movie. Yeah. So this is a fun category. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I am, I shouldn't be surprised. So Derek, we'll start off with you. Cause I'm slightly surprised by this, but I'm not surprised by this. Well, actually I'm going to. While while we're sitting here talking, I'm going to make a little addendum there. Uh -oh. uh, I'm going to cheat. Nice. Um, no we, all did, we all did. We all did. <laughs> because I I actually filled this out before I saw this other movie. Um, mm. but but I still like them both a lot. So sure. 
my, my original pick was Aquaman, and I, I still love Aquaman. The movie's great. It's made a billion dollars at the box office now, so mm -hmm. this is the first real bona fide hit for the DC universe. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of action. For me, it never really felt like the movie got long and got old because they kept changing things up as the movie was going through. Um, it was great. Uh, it's, it's also one of those that, you know, um, I, I saw it with my son. Mm -hmm. We both really enjoyed it. And now it's like, okay, one of these days we're going to go to the 3D showing and watch it again just because we want to see it, you know, with the, the special effects of the sure. 3D and everything. But uh, I liked it enough that I'm willing to see it again in the theater and buy the premium ticket wow. uh, to see it a second time. So I enjoyed it. Comic accurate. I got to yeah. get around to watching it. I, I got to make time. Maybe this week. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really good. Like, I, I, I want to go back and see it again, but I just haven't. So Okay. And then your other your other side pick, which which is my um First pick. <laughs> my, my main pick, Spider Man Into the Spider Verse, which I just saw this past weekend. So <laughs> I love that movie. I I almost put that in as my second slot. Although I I will say, my son started laughing uncontrollably the first time they showed Kingpin. Because Kingpin is literally the front of a bus with a head. <laughs> is how they animated him. Like he yeah. is he's eight feet wide right. and fifteen feet tall with like this regular size human head. Uh, so I was, I thought, when he started talking, it was when I started laughing. I was like, Really? <laughs> like, okay, because I wasn't not that not that I was expecting like uh D'Onofrio or anything like that. I was like, okay, that voice coming out of that body was like, all right, sure. Yeah, I I wasn't so happy with Lee uh Leif Shriver's uh voice on that but it grew on me so it couldn't have been too bad although yeah. some of the voices like i didn't do any research into it before i saw it you know so right. i didn't really know anything about it so like spider-man noir shows up and i'm like is that nick cage yes. <laughs> oh, you know, what is this and then and then spider ham awesome yeah. spider ham shows up and i'm like is that john what's his name Mulroney? Mul 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 yeah. yeah 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 i, I was like i wrote on that do what how did you not know get spoiled on either one of those? Because because I don't I, I I try not to look at that stuff. Right. Hmm. You know, it's like w when I go out and and I, I Google the things I specifically want to find. Sure. I don't go to sites and just start scrolling through and looking at everything. So and then that's something I've learned from sports. Uh, you know, getting into sports the last couple of years is that so many websites will try to you know, throw scores and stats and stuff. At. It's like, I haven't watched it yet. Why are you like, ah, son of a, right. so that's what I've done a lot in the past year. Or so looking at comic stuff, like I, I go through a previews catalog, you know, with half my brain shut off. So I don't mm -hmm. see a lot of the details. I just see, this is the book. This is when it's coming out. This is the artist. I might be interested. Right. I, I don't look at a lot of details beyond that, you know? Right. I gotcha. I gotcha. I mean, uh, it, it makes me laugh because uh, most of the time, uh, PC and underscore dirt doesn't stick around for the news. That's where he gets spoiled. Right. And we get spoiled because I do the news and, and you know, and, and they just have it's here for it. So it's like, you know, so, that's, that's but, uh, but, to, but to, to wrap up the favorite comic book movie. So since dirt and Roddy had, uh, well, I wasn't quite finished with you, but you, you, we, but the rest of it's kind of on with you and Tim's anyway. Yeah, exactly. What I was going to say is because your half, and my half, my your second uh, choice or or co choice is the same as mine. That's Black Panther, mm -hmm. and uh, and Avengers because you can't see it, but Avengers: Infinity War also. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, so you have three up there. I do. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's bad. I, I mean, I had co see because I had Avengers: Infinity War with Black Panther and Into the Spider Verse tied for a close second, so I had. Uh, BP and, and, and Spider-Verse tied for a close second, but my top choice was Infinity War because that's what we've been waiting for for 10 years, and it paid off. And that's what uh, Tim's choice was as well. Well, so um, I'll get into that a little bit more with the next category, because I don't think it's going not going to pay off until... Endgame. Yes. So, and like and like you said, uh, Tim's was also uh, Avengers: Infinity War, and yes, it, it definitely was what we've been waiting for. Like the, the last ten years of build up have pretty much been leading to this, and uh, yeah, it's paying off. So, with that, unless we have something else to to, to talk about, with that, uh, we get to the next uh, category, which is 
comic book movie you are looking forward to, and since we're kind of already, <laughs> we've kind of already, you know, reached that subject. Yeah. Um, so three out of the four of us had Avengers in game for it. And I will go ahead and say that um, because I don't. It, it is while Infinity War started to pay off, I don't think it's going to, you know, everything's not going to pay off until in game finishes. No, I agree with that. But I think that the payoff in infinity war was you know seeing everyone all these heroes get together and right. Thanos's quest actually succeed so right. that's where the payoff I, I at least a partial payoff let's say sure considering they teased thanos at the end of the first avengers movie uh right. however many years ago that was yeah. right at least yeah something like that but yes and so I'm I'm the one odd man out that didn't pick uh, Endgame, uh, <laughs> and that's because I'm looking forward to Shazam, uh, and that to me, hey, you know what? Hey, here's the crazy thing. Again, we talk about not getting spoilers and not you know looking into stuff. I saw I watched that original um, teaser thing that they put out for Shazam, you know, months and months and months ago, and I was like, okay, that looks kind of fun. And then they have the the new extended trailer. You know, I forgot what I went to go see, but it was before. Maybe I guess it was before Aquaman they showed it, but it was probably I'm sure you know on TV for right. uh, weeks and weeks before that. But it wasn't until this time that I saw the trailer that I went, "Wait, is that the guy from Chuck?" <laughs> like, like it didn't even be, because most of these actors in this stuff, like I don't know their names anymore. You sure. know, like most of these people are just they're interchangeable and it doesn't matter. Um, but I was like, that guy really looks from. Like, holy crap, that's the dude from Chuck. And, <laughs> and I love the fact that he's in this big fake muscle suit. Um, you know, like an obviously fake muscle suit. Like they've yeah. made him way too big in this thing as he's walking right. around. Because part of the character is he is this little kid in the adult body that doesn't fit right. right. And so you, you see him walking around in that big muscle suit. And it just, like it embodies the, the idea behind the character so well. Right. So yeah, I, I'm so looking forward to that movie. Although to be fair, um, which we we'll call it, the guy from Chuck, um, he actually did get fairly jacked for this because I've seen pictures of him flexing, and he's got you know like if not twenty four inch pythons, we're getting that you know we're getting close <laughs> because he you know he was flexing in a in a in a in a con picture with somebody, and I was like, holy cow, he actually put on you know some serious muscle for this, so yeah. Like him and like Chris Pratt. Cause remember Chris Pratt was like, wait, this dude from Parks and Rec, he got Jack for, for um, <laughs> Guardians, yeah. Guardians. I was like, what the world's going on here? And then you see this, and I'm like, oh wow. Well, yeah, and I love I loved also when they explained it in Parks and Recreation when he right. like he comes back on the show and they're like, So how did you get in shape? He's like, I just stopped drinking beer. After I stopped drinking beer, all the calories just went away. How much beer did you drink? A lot. <laughs> and, and they just kind of left it at that. It's like, okay. Andy stopped drinking beer and he got into shape. That's funny. There you go. So, but yeah, but yeah, fly, oh, excuse me, Flash. Uh, Shazam does look fun. And, and, yeah. kind of fun. and well, also, hey, what's that? Yeah, I was gonna, I, I was gonna say, Roddy, what's that? Uh, I didn't click on it. What's the the uh, the secondary? I just mentioned the fact that hey, you know, because like I said earlier, um, the Spidey Far From Home trailer, the teaser trailer just dropped uh, with, within a couple of days of this uh, recording, and. Right. Um, that is looking interesting, and apparently we already know it's it's comic accurate. And and uh, I think I did also allude to a Captain Marvel because I'm kind of curious as to how they're going to tie that into Avengers Endgame, which obviously is going to happen afterwards. But you know, it is what it is. And uh, so there's that. Uh, next category, which is one I'm still having trouble with. Yeah, we're uh, in the hardcore uh, comic book categories now. Yep, best penciler. Right, so I went with one of my old stand, my 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 standards for the recent past, Jim Chung, who is doing uh, bang up work in twenty eight, who did bang up work in twenty eighteen on um, Marvel two and one and Justice League. Okay, thank you. You just answered the question that I was really was looking for just well, as um, a second ago. So I'm going to copy that answer. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I went with uh, Andrea Sorrentino. 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 Yeah. Okay. Um, who who's working on um, uh, Gideon Falls? 
I, I was gonna say Gravity Falls, and I was like, no, that's something. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Although, although uh, you know, Gravity Falls could also be a great TV show if you want to get into that. But um, sure. um, but yeah, I, I love, and it's kind of a cheat in a way because he's a penciler and an inker and a colorist, and you know, you, you could put him. There's a number Anywhere. of artists out there for this. You know, yeah, well, and the same the same goes with my pick for best artist. It's right. The the same way, but uh, but yeah, I I just anytime he's working on a book like from Old Man Logan or you know wh whatever he's gonna do when when I see his artwork, it's like I'm probably gonna go check that out because that's an artist I want to follow. I want to see what they're doing. I really like the art. Sure enough, sure enough. So um, Tim's choice was uh, Jorge Jimenez. And I know that he, you know, in the in the shows that uh, Tim was on before uh, Fatherhood, um, he did definitely hype up uh, Jorge Jimenez's art. So that's uh, that's definitely, um, you know, Tim putting in some recognition for that artist. And he's done a lot of work on uh, Super Sons. I know that. Right. Absolutely. I don't so, know what else he's done though. Well, speaking of what we were, you know, speaking of what we literally were just talking about in the category of best colorist, um, my, you know, my choice for this is, you know, someone who, you know, as Dirt was just saying, does it all basically when he's doing his work, he does the penciling, the inking, the coloring, or if it's digital, you know, pencils to color, straight to colors. And my choice for best colorist was Christian Ward, specifically for his work on Black Bolt, which wrapped up in 2018. And uh, well, my pick for colorist is also someone that does a lot of other artwork as well. But mm -hmm. Sarah Pacelli, uh, who I most recently uh, saw her work with the uh, the Spider Man Miles Morales that series that just ended. Um, right. But she was one of those that really she added so much texture and depth and weight and shadow, and you know just made the artwork no matter who it was that she was coloring in just really made it pop. And come alive and so i really like all of that artwork that that she did and while roddy's considering um uh, yeah, uh, it's okay tim's choice uh is someone else who he's uh previously touted in the past and that's matthew wilson so uh shout out to matthew wilson uh tim has definitely recognized his work um as a colorist in the past and continues to do so and i'm going to go with something because the only was a person I can think of at this point and unfortunately I, my mind is terrible and um, I should really keep up with this so there's that's something to think about for <laughs> for a category later on but I'm going to give a shout out to because I really don't have one but I'm gonna give a shout out to um, David Baldion who's doing uh, uh, Domino okay right now his works pretty great and actually oh shoot no 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 i'm changing that i just thought about it, <laughs> I just thought about it. Darn, done it i don't know why i even think didn't even think about this earlier um bear with me for a second because i totally can't remember his name uh, we were doing best colorist do you want to do put him in there or you want to put him in best artist uh best artist okay so we'll move on to the next category yeah. uh for best artist um I know Dirt's pick and my pick are, are kind of uh, mainstays. Oh, nice. We're, we're watching as Roddy updates the, the spreadsheet in real time here. Exactly. And that was a pretty good pick. I like that. So just to, uh, you know, just to get the ball rolling, my pick for best artist, is, um, in, in my case, specifically for all the covers, that he's contributed and you know the guy's putting in some yeoman work um over the past year and, and and change for marvel and that's alex ross he's churned out a ton of cover work over the last year and change you know actually going past two years because um that's how far i can think i i, I think i can remember his uh recent cover run you know kind of uh, uh you know uh, running on uh yeah, at its current pace, there was a time when all you would see was uh, Astro City from Alex Ross, but now he's churning out Marvel covers by the boatload. Uh, and mine is uh, Mitch Gerards, who's um, did Mister Miracle this year, uh, did a recent issue of uh, Batman, um, 
and uh, did Sheriff of Babylon in years past where I've given him the nod there. So again, one of my, one of my mainstays to go back to, especially if Mike Mignola is not doing uh, a comic in the calendar year for right. him to count, then, then there's my backup. <laughs> and for myself, which I will go ahead and say that uh, the, um, I went back to, to the best color on foot, Jody Bellar, because why not? Um, but for best artist, and I don't know why I didn't even think about this, Nico Leon. Because mm. it is no surprise that I love, 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 love Miss Marvel and everything, and, and Agent Seventy also, and his work on that, um, you know, taking over for, um, oh shoot, and of course the name Adrian Alfona and uh, talking Alfona. as well. Yes, um, has just been stellar, and and not even missing a beat. So exactly, definitely keeping the mood and the tone, and it's it's mm. as Roddy said, uh, you know, that that's a great feat. Definitely. And with that, uh, Tim apparently did not have one. Cause, I mean, you know, best artists, it, it, there was a lot of good art last few years. So, was, you know, I, I don't blame him for not, not being able to fill that one out. So we move on to best writer. And we all have different. Oh, no, we don't all have different choices. Look at that. PCN underscore dirt and Tim had the same writer. So we both had a bad pick either because these, you know, the, the guy's on some, some, He's turned out some, stars, some great stuff in 2018. Yeah, I was going to say, we both had Donny Cates, and Donny Cates wrote some of my favorite stuff mm -hmm. uh, in 2018 with uh, Thanos and Cosmic Ghost Rider and Death of the Inhumans, even though it ended up being a big fake out. And, uh, ah. you know, we'll so, get that. And yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, we'll I put it on the list, down the list somewhere else. But uh, yep. we'll get there. to it. <clears throat> Get to later but, on. but nonetheless, I, I, was, I was always entertained by the stuff he did this year or last year. Now, Agent 70, your pick's kind of surprising. Well, I chose oh, Jodorowsky yeah. simply for what he was doing on Spectacular Spider-Man, Peter Parker's Spectacular Spider-Man. That was just impressive, impressive stuff. I almost picked Saladin Ahmed for Black Bolt, too. So mm. I'm, I, I'm disappointed that I didn't type that in. I might actually type it in now um, just as like a as a as a runner up, you know, like like as a. The same thing that uh, Roddy Cat did, actually. Hmm. I mean, and, and the reason why I say sh the, the surprising because, like, you know, Sadarsky's come up from being an artist. He still does art from from time to time, but uh, you know, from art to being a writer and the the the, the stuff that he's done, like you know, Marvel Two and One, and uh, like you said, Spectacular has been good stuff. Uh, even something we will probably get to next week was actually pretty decent. There you go. Um, so yeah, he's he's. Definitely showing his chops as a writer. Um, for myself, I put Al Ewing, and that is off the stretch. Now, I think last year, I don't know if I, I think I've either had him in the running or I'd probably put him in the same category um, already. But on the strength of Immortal Hulk mm -hmm. is why I put Al, Al Ewing in this one, because based on the stuff that he's done before and this being a completely you know, different tone than he than he's written in um in the past. Just is is awesome. And I also put a shout out to Solid and Ahmed for the stuff he's did because he's doing some great work, you know. Starting from from Black Bolt and including the stuff he's doing now. He's about to take over Miss Marvel. So we'll see how that works out. Um but I have I have good feelings on that. So and now we swing the bat to the most disappointing comic. Right. So I'm not surprised that Dirt's pick, but I'm just going to shout out mine real quick. Um, my most disappointing comic um, for 2018 is a tie between As Guardians of the Galaxy, which is a, you know, kind of an ill-conceived spinoff. And um, it's tied with Heroes in Crisis because I'm still having a lot of trouble just Kind of figuring out what the heck we're what we're doing. Sure that is going on, so we we'll see how. I think I suspect that might be in the same category next year. We don't know. Depending on how it turns out, we don't know. We don't know. Yeah, like I I've mentioned before, my hatred for this particular story. <laughs> but you know, there's always the chance something can happen in the final issue that that redeems the whole thing yeah like like everything was a lie everything you thought you knew to be true was not true you know so there, there could always be some sort of twist mm -hmm. so you at least got to see it out to the end but yeah i am no fan of heroes in crisis either <laughs> but no, i actually I, 
Go ahead. Go. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say I actually put uh, Tom King's Batman uh, as my <laughs> disappointing on record as saying you've been disappointed with with. Yeah, because that that seems to be a theme this year. Was just like, come on, like one yeah. thing after another. So again, though, I mean, he's got you know what forty or th- thirty eight more issues to go in his hundred issue run. So we'll, we'll we'll see it through to the end and see if it's worth uh, worth everything that happened. But yeah, I've not been a fan of uh, what's happened in the last couple of years. All right. I mean, it took how many issues to get to the fake out wedding, and then dealing with the fake out wedding, and then the the fallout from the fake out wedding. That's a span of twenty books, uh, twenty issues. And like you said, dirt last week, you know, uh, stuff kind of come out of nowhere, and or coming up out of nowhere. Yeah, although the the last issue of Batman, I think, kind of explained what's going on in these last few issues that haven't made a whole lot of sense so we'll talk about that next week um so that at least makes it a little bit better but still it's not what i want to be reading right now Mm -hmm. and although i don't i don't think we have this category if there was a surprise issue there would be probably one or two of those uh tom king batman issues that i would put in that category because i'm not even reading batman and, and, and it had me reading those other issues but that's a whole other situation and we don't i don't think we have that category um tim puts wait is this yeah. thing that already uncanny x-men disassembled yeah i think that who, was... who's reading x-men who else is reading x-men Anybody i am know? isn't that a, wasn't i thought that was uh uh, what should call it? I thought I that thought came out before. Uh, before I, uh, what should call it? That uh, the cable, right, uh, the cable one shot. Yeah. Um. Oh. Oh. The the um. I don't. Yeah. Know. I think. That, I think. That, I think this assembly was like a one shot where they started talking about what the 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 what's the, uh, the the future holds and going into um the next year's worth of uh, events. So. I have to look it up, but I yeah, think that's what it was. We're let it roll for now, sir. Sure, because uh, yeah, because you, you know you being the other person, that's yeah, that's following the right? right? So, and I had a hard time figuring out something because yes, there for I feel like there's an issue or two or of books that I that have been disappointing to. I can't think of like a whole run of a book that's been disappointing. Mm. I'm pretty sure event wise, that's that's going to be different, but but I couldn't really think of anything, so that's why I don't have anything for that. Um, so next we're going to go to comics that comic or comics that died too quickly. And apparently we have a, um, <laughs> I did not know this was a thing. I did. Well, so Agent Servant Aid Dirt, you both have the Sentry. I'm actually surprised that you went with the Sentry because you hate the Sentry. Nah, but at the end of the day, that miniseries was pretty I good. the one who hates the century. I, I don't know how where where eighty seventy kind of came off on that one. But I but, like yeah, that miniseries. Yeah, the, well, and the thing was, it wasn't um, solicited as a miniseries. Mm-hmm. It was right. solicited as the new series for the century, and it wasn't until like issue two came out and they solicited five that they were like, "Oh, that's the end of the miniseries at five. And it's like, "Wait, what? What miniseries?" Like it was never, like it was solicited when the number one came out. It was solicited as ongoing, like mm-hmm. it's the new series, and then it was not. Um, but yeah, it was great, and like, like I even argued on this show that it actually redeemed the character, made him <laughs> interesting again, um, and and it made him sympathetic, and uh, it was a lot of fun, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. And then to see it just, okay, well, there you got your one story, and it's over, and it's done, and it's gone. It's like I was sad. Hmm. I like Roddy's pick. Roddy just put his pick in because I just, I just, especially going back with who we talked about a, a couple of categories ago. I just thought about it. Like, Man, they could have, they could have done more with that. And that being Marvel two and one, because yes, there was, so there was the whole thing leading up to it, to where they were getting the Fantastic Four back together again, and that happened, even though it happened in Fantastic Four, not here. Uh, and the last couple of issues of that book kind of glossed over that fact or you know was in a different place than say fancy four coming in they could have at the very least gone back to the classic form and, and did the team up like they did in the last couple of issues or something other like like that book and especially with with what they're doing with their 80th anniversary stuff uh, coming this year uh with bringing back you know old books which they did this week uh started doing bring back um 
old um, old series. Right. So I mean, granted, not that they, they haven't done because they mentioned that last week in the news. Like it's not that they they have been doing that anyway, but nevertheless, they could have kept this going in. You know, in addition to that stuff they're doing for the for the uh, 80th. All right. And the last uh, pick for comics that died too quickly from uh, Tim Dog ninety eight was X Men Red. I actually agree with that, but at the same time, um, I understand that it has to make way for this big event, and it's kind of a shame. Although all of the X Men Blue was canceled, X Men Gold right. was canceled, so Red was still kind of lingering around. But you knew it was only a matter of time before it was going to go. Exactly. Although it only it only got what ten issues. No, I think it's getting 13, so it's not done no. yet, but it's about to end. All right. But yes, that's still pretty quick for an X-Men book. Mm. Absolutely. You know, I feel like the way things are going and the 90s coming back, <laughs> I'm sure there'll be a, another two or three or four X-Men books coming in the near future. Um, And I guess, speaking of, let's go to the next category, which is is books that need more readers i have nothing for this because i couldn't think of one book like i could well i i could say miss marvel because but i'm always say that um but uh, right and that's a fair pick because what i was gonna say what i use as criteria for this is actually looked at the top 500 books of the year and i felt like immortal hulk as much as we like it as much as it's sort of like kind of critically acclaimed i feel like it should be getting more eyeballs Hmm. That's my pick, and I think that you your pick is is just as good. Ms. Marvel needs more eyeballs. Uh, also, well, I was gonna it was gonna be a split between either I don't know because like I said I couldn't think of one like that. Champions probably could use more eyeballs, but I don't know. We'll see what Dub's doing in the long run on this one. But yeah, right. Uh, and then I put the same thing I put for last year. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a cheat, but uh, alternative <laughs> line of newsprint comics. I love the newsprint. I love the the smell of the old newsprint comics. I love that they're cheap, dollar, dollar fifty, um, and and plus they're doing such a wide array of books under this umbrella. So you've got some sci-fi titles, you've got uh, some westerns, you've got horror books, you've got uh, kids line, you've got you know uh, just about anything you can think of. They did superheroes. They've done you know everything in this line. So. You know, there's really no excuse not to go out and read something from them because they've got just about everything covered and they're cheap and they have that great smell of newsprint and some of them have fantastic artwork and great stories to them. Uh, and you know, there's a lot of neat stuff going on with that line. So yeah, they just more people need to be paying attention to the cheap newsprint comics. And one nice thing about them is they still do support the newsstand. So if you go out to your Barnes and Noble and you look through the comics, you will find some of them out there on the stands because nice. they are still trying to support that outlet. Cool. And if you listen to episode 296, you will hear Dort um, speak a little bit more about that. Oh, yeah, I did talk last week, didn't I? Yeah. Yes, you did. Um, and to round... What the world? Oh. Um, to round it out, Tim said Venom. Yes. Although, isn't Venom doing well? Who knows? I don't know. I'd have to take a look at the sales charts. Yeah. Um, um, actually, yeah, it was number oh. for for the year twenty eighteen. It was number seven in units and number nine in dollars. Hmm. Hmm. So I think it's doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe he just thinks it needs to be number one. So yeah, maybe he likes it that much. Maybe. All right. So um, our next category is best yeah. comic book with potential. Mm -hmm. Currently running. Currently running books. So I guess to, to bounce off of that, uh, Tim also said Venom. So I guess he sees something in that book that the rest of us are not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's another Donny Cates book. It's okay. good. It, it, I mean, it is good. You know, um, I've been reading it too. It's just. There's other stuff I like better, but it's still it's sure. sort of solid. Yeah. Okay. I do. Speaking of your pick, though, I do. I I, I want to um, catch up on this book, and I I I obviously I can't agree because I've uh, I haven't read it, but um, coming out of it, dirt. Yeah, I, I put the terrifics. Uh, the tricks. Terrifics does have a lot of great potential. Um, one of the big things that they're doing now is uh, universe hopping, and so they've met up with uh, Tom Strong. 
um, from that line of uh, comics. ABC books, yeah. Yeah, and um, they brought in uh, Phantom Girl uh, from Legion of Superheroes. Wow. Um, they Okay, so if you go back <laughs> to 30 years of Legion of Superheroes history uh, with Phantom Girl, she was actually from the modern time but had somehow time-traveled to the future no she was from the future and a time traveled to the modern time right yes and then the shapeshifter from the modern time traveled to the future and the shapeshifter in the future became the guy who founded the company that paid to start the legion of superheroes and he got the idea from the group legion 89 uh that started in the dc universe and the dc new format books that were dollar 25 when all of the comics were 75 cents and uh but so they they brought that character back in Terrifics. Uh, they just run across her. She's stuck uh, in her phantom form in this other universe. Mister Terrific is able to to pull her out, and he um, pulls out Elongated Man, and he pulls out uh, Metamorpho, uh, and Metamorpho is now cured. So he's now like back to being a, a hotshot archaeologist, uh, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Indiana Jones type character which is really kind of weird but it makes sense uh, mm -hmm. because that's the character's background and everything uh, and they just keep playing with stuff and bringing in these weird obscure characters from different parts of the dc universe and just like building on it and playing on it and going to different universes and bringing stuff out and it's just so much fun so uh uh i want to say is it jeff lemire i don't want to give someone else credit for the book that's not right but no. uh, yeah I, I think it is um and he's one of those guys who it's jobs working at uh like valiant and they'll just say do something with bloodshot and so he'll work with bloodshot you know for a year and just come up with a bunch of weird stuff and it always works and it's always great um and so i really like what's going on the terrifics i love just like it's like i said it has so much potential um, because there's just so much that they can do with all these weird obscure characters in different pockets of the dc universe and and some of this stuff uh some of these characters haven't been touched in rebirth and the new 52 and all of that stuff. So it's like, this is the first time you're, you're seeing some of these people again and dealing with some of this stuff. So again, it's, it's a fun exploration of the rest. It's, it's not metropolis. It's not Gotham. You know, it's like how Marvel gets stuck in New York city all the time. Everything's New York city and in, in DC. Uh, it's pretty much always like uh, metropolis Gotham or, you know, Kandahak, uh, you know, <laughs> they're, they're gonna fight somebody. Um, but yeah, it is Jeff Lemire. I just looked yeah, at it. It is Lemire, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But there's there's just so much fun stuff that happens in that book. I, I really enjoy it. Uh side note, did you see they put silence silence on an arrow? I'm gonna ask you that earlier. Me? Yeah, you. In in the TV show Arrow? Mm-hmm. I don't watch it. I know. But I know I, you were a uh, silencer, but you know, I didn't know if you had caught that they had done that. Oh no, but it won't be enough to make me watch Arrow. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so keeping up with this category, um, Agent Seventy. I my pick for uh, this uh, comic book with potential is Ghost Spider Spider Gwen, coming off of Spider Verse, coming off of the big Spider Geddon event where um, Spider Gwen's powers and uh, costumes identity have changed and have transformed, and I think that this book has a lot of potential going forward. Is it an ongoing? I thought it was just yes. a mini series. Oh, no, it's ongoing. They just relaunched oh. it to give her the new uh, code name uh, mm -hmm. because they want her to adopt the uh, the Ghost Spider moniker, and um, and it's a new creative team. But exactly, new creative team, new uh, and, and a new direction because of uh, her new power set. Is she no longer in the other universe? I think she, yeah, she is. She, she, she is. is. The key oh, she's in her home. Yeah, she's in her home universe. Oh. Yeah. yeah, she can just come back and forth if she needs to. I think still. Right. That's that's her. that's that's her new power set, which is that she can do it on her own. She can actually jump between um, realities on her own. Wait, did that happen in Spider Geddon? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Ken hadn't read that yet, but hey, next year. Um. Yeah, Spider Gun's always a good pick, so I'm really gonna, I can't be mad at it. So I just thought about this one just a second ago. Um, 
West Coast Avengers. Now, any anybody who's heard to, to listen to the show a lot, I love the West Coast Avengers, the the original version of West Coast Original. I had some slight intrepidations with this new crew, with specifically a couple of people on the said team. Still do, but the team is still as kind of wacky as the original was one was. Um, so here's hoping you know that continues to keep up to tradition. The, wack- the wackos. Yeah, and, and my son is actually reading West Coast Avengers. Uh, in, he's liking it. Uh, well, it's because he wanted to follow Gwynpool, but of right. course they changed her power set and everything, so he's upset about that. But um, he he enjoys it more than Champions. Um, hmm. He he got into Champions because it was a kids team. You know, right. it's like they're all young and so he thought that was exciting um but he didn't really like the book very much um and and in fact he he heard a criticism somebody said one time where it seemed like i forget who was writing champions early on but he was like whoever's writing it hates these characters wade mark wade yeah so so he's like he's like mark wade hates these characters and and he was kind of confused he's like what do you mean the writer hates the characters but then he started thinking about it it's like all the crap that he's putting them through he's like mm-hmm. that's kind of why i don't like it it really seems like he does like not want to be writing this book and dealing with these characters and put them through so much garbage and came up with so much other stuff going on west coast avengers he feels has been a lot more fun mm-hmm. and a lot more exciting and and more willing to like do fun crazy stuff like 200 foot tall tigra and you know yeah. like stuff like that going on so he enjoys it a whole lot more than than champions right i think i think champions is going to with the new with its new direction i think it's probably worth a uh a second chance because i i i, I tend to agree with um that overall criticism of that previous run of champions where that's an old trope where you throw the kitchen sink at a hero and you see how they come out of it but do, doing it in a in a, a more <coughs> excuse me a kid atmosphere you know a more teenage atmosphere it's a lot tougher so hey look these superheroes got to grow up sometime <laughs> just like the theme to 21 jump street <laughs> yes <laughs> gotta grow, up. Up. grow up sometime all right. Oh, I was about to say, wait a second. Where? How do? How did that come in? And don't don't say anything bad about Holly Robinson. You know, uh, singing that. Song. that. Yeah, don't say nothing bad about Holly Robinson. Pete. Oh, uh, oh I'm, I'm not saying anything bad. I'm just saying I can't sing as well. No, as I, know. <laughs> I, I shouldn't be trying to do the theme song. The, so. the, the, the fact that you brought that up and it was like, wait, did they put that in the movie? I mean, I know you're of a certain vintage, so you wouldn't know the. I, I'm. Movie. I am of the vintage that I watched that air live. Me on too. That were. Yeah. I mean, we all are. Booker, and I liked Booker more. Booker. Oh, <laughs> no. Richard Rico was my guy. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> if Looks Could Kill is one of my favorite movies. In oh, fact, in fact oh, I have a download of that. Every every like year and a half or so, I, I bust that out and watch that again. Oh, my God. Oh. oh, my goodness. Right here on uh, Comic-Con. Yeah, you know something new, folks. I'm here. Well, I was standing there, and I saw him. I was just like, Richard Grieco. <laughs> anyway. All right. Well, um, I don't know where we are today. Um, oh, books we're <laughs> – yeah, we're just going to move past that and say books we are looking forward to uh, in the new year. That That is the yeah. – Right. So I chose an, an event book. Um, because I'm pretty sure it's going to have a mini series uh, attached to it. It's not going to just be in Thor. I I said War of the Realms. You have more faith than I think a lot of people do, including myself. But hey, uh, I put Daredevil number one. I'm looking forward to the relaunch. I'm not Wait, already in it. No, no, no. They're doing Man Without Fear right mini series right now. Oh, I thought that was the um, okay. No, that's like a five issue. And it's like, correct me if I'm wrong, Agent Seventy. You've been reading Man Without Fear, haven't you? Just the first issue. I okay. I know I, I'm behind. Well, isn't it like the Daredevil book without Daredevil? Yes and no. It's kind of like Daredevil kind of getting back on his feet after the events of the previous run. So yeah, and so I'm looking forward to the Daredevil one where it's like they they, they got to that right. Yeah, get up and running. So um. Tim picked Young Justice. Yeah. So that's good. I mean, I I kind of would go along with it. the one that book is already out because it just started. 
Um, what last? What was it last week? Week for last? It was last week? I think. Cause I know I it was last week. Yeah, it was because we did talk about it. No, yeah, we did. It was last week. Um, I'm slightly in agreement with them, but I don't know. But I also had a bunch of as we, as we talked about last week had some uh, worries <laughs> about that book because of Bendis. Uh, and I don't have anything that I was looking forward to. Not that I don't. Just I just don't necessarily remember what all is coming out to, to be. You know, there was nothing that, that kind of struck me at this point. Um, well, yeah, and and even to Daredevil one, I kind of had to dig a little bit yeah. to try to figure out because, li- like I said, when I I go through the catalogs, I don't pay attention. I don't pay attention to the news mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. So I kind of had to really th- kind of think for a while, like what is coming out, like what new books are going to be coming, and and oh, okay, yeah, Daredevil. I am because I did enjoy. I, I jumped on the last series. I jumped off for a while because mm-hmm. um, I didn't like. I get. I think it was Mark Wade. Uh, that was doing it. I liked the Lee Weeks artwork, but I didn't like the writing. Um, and so then when it jumped to 600, uh, I jumped back on to try it again. I liked it. I read through that. One. Yeah. With Charles soul. I thought it was really good. Uh, and enjoyed the heck out of that. But then of course it ended. It's going to be relaunching with a new team, but I'll give it a chance because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I did enjoy that, that run. Hmm. Uh, well, moving right along, uh, we get to, the one category that only one person was able to fill out. <laughs> <laughs> That's this guy. And that is Dirt with worst licensed title. And, um, and, and, and I know this is the worst because I actually bought it and read it. Okay. Um, and this is Doll Man Kills the Full Moon Universe. And Doll Man. To, to um, I, I, I look, I love the Full Moon Universe. Like I grew up watching, they were the direct to vhs horror sci-fi movies okay um, every time you went to the video rental store uh they, they always had something new with trancers or doll man demonic toys um puppet master um like all of those sci-fi horror movies and and i i loved that stuff growing up but this series the artwork is just so bad mm-hmm. like it it feels like this is like some high school kids art project uh, if it looks unfinished in a lot of places, um, they they do a lot of just like general uh, like like the, a character's a guy, so I'm going to draw a guy. Looks nothing like the actor. You know, the actor may have been in six of these direct to VHS movies, but let's not worry about making it look like the actor. We're just going to draw a guy and say that that's the character. You know, um, it, so it's really like not doing a lot of stuff with the license um, and it it really is doing a poor job of trying to fold all these different characters together um it's so isolated each issue kind of deals with a different section or a different group of characters from a different set of movies and you don't really get the sense like you're in a big universe it's more like a bunch of one shots that are kind of strung together Mm -hmm. um so i have not been a fan but of course it's like Got it. I have the first three. I'll buy the fourth. I'll buy the fifth. You know, just to you know, the momentum of of getting them and being a fan of Full Moon in general. But uh, it is just not not a good series. Hmm. And also, just re- uh, realized another potential book, but we're not. I'm not even going to worry about that right now. Um. So the only thing I say. So I think Dirt and probably m- me. I have been reading any uh, amount of licensed titles. Um, and I'm not sure about Tim. I-, I couldn't think of a worse title, but I could think of I could think of one. I can't think of one that is kind of unnecessary, and that's um, Saban's Go Go Power Rangers, which will actually tie into the next um, next uh, category because it they basically said it was like, well, this is their personal lives, and this is them like right after they got their powers. So this is more supposedly kind of focused, but it also tied into Shattered Greer some uh, some side way, um, which was which is actually a pretty good event, but whatever. Um, <laughs> but I don't, I'm not entirely sure that Go Go was very much necessary, mm-hmm. but but I'm not gonna sit here and say it's the worst one because it's actually a pretty good read. It's just I, I'm like, I don't, you know, it kind of didn't make any sense, especially with, with which I guess we will go into da, 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 the next, uh, cause and like I said, uh, uh, Dirt was the only one who actually 
had anything for this one. So we're going to best license title. Uh, oh, and apparently eight to seven did actually put something in there. Yeah, based on a single issue. <laughs> at the yeah. end of the year, I'm talking about the licensed Marvel Conan the Barbarian. <laughs> well, that's one that came out the day after Christmas. I believe so. Yeah. 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 So just eked, eked exactly. By. It just got in under the wire. Well, luckily we do these after the year after the year starts, so we can do that kind of stuff. So, <laughs> um, sure. Hey, I hope that works out. Um, have you read I, two yet, though? It's out this week. It's in my pile. I didn't know if you had a chance to because it showed up late. <clears throat> um, <laughs> but but for me, the best licensed title they've done a bunch of these specials uh, throughout the year, and that's based off the Amazing World of Gumball, which I have to like. As a grown adult watching a child's cartoon, that is, that, is, weird show. that is the most fantastic show on TV right now. Really? Um, it really, like, honestly, it feels like the early Adult Swim when Adult Swim was weird before it got adult, you know? It does a whole lot. And, and it's, it's the animation of the show is crazy where you, you have CG rendered models, you have cardboard cutouts sometimes, you'll have hand puppets, you have regular animation, um, you know, just all kinds of weird stuff mashed together. But the comic is is based more off of taking the feel of the characters and the storylines and the humor. Uh, it doesn't go so much into the different art styles and everything, but it really tries to get that that feel of the show. Like you feel like you're really watching a new story with those characters in the comics medium as opposed to watching the animation medium. So it's not trying to ape everything you see on the screen, but it's trying to faithfully represent the characters and new stories. And, you know, again, I buy them for my kids. Um, you know, if my kids want comics, I buy them for them. You know, it's like, well, the one thing my wife's like, she's like, they should be spending their own allowance on them. And I'm like, ah, I'm not going to do that to them because this is for me, it's like the greatest thing I can do with my kids is, is share comics with them. So, um, I buy them all and and I give them to them. They read them. Then after they go to bed at night, I go in the rooms and I sneak and I pull out the gumball ones and I read them myself. Nice. I, I was just like, wait, he's about to get to it. And there it is. <laughs> it's like, how can I make this heartwarming story kind of creepy? Uh, well, yeah. not creepy, just a little, you know, it's like, hey, you get something out of it yourself. So, so, yeah. so. Um, but yeah, that, that if, you've, if you've not watched that gumball uh, show, uh, uh, Age of Seventeen. I don't know if it's gonna be your cup of tea, but check it out. It's a, it's a, that show's kind of crazy. Okay. Well, and there's a lot of jokes that go over the kids' heads. Right. There's, there's jokes about uh, renting VHS tapes and um, getting scratches on a CD, and you know stuff that that the kids don't really understand or know anything about. But you, as the adult, they get the idea of fast forwarding, rewinding, mm -hmm. but they don't understand the idea of a magnetic tape in a in a box that you put into a machine on the TV, you know? So there's stuff that, that they don't really understand the dynamics of it, but they understand the idea of fast forwarding, rewinding, whatever. Um, and, but you as an adult, you're, it's like, okay, this is speaking to me. You sure. know, obviously the people behind the show are working on two different levels with these stories. I'm, I'm looking at, you know, the animation style and uh, yeah, not exactly something I'd stop on. So, and, and give it a shot. Holy cow. It, it kind of goes places. It's it's strange. Wow. Weird. Um, but anyway, uh to round out the best licensed title, I have Mighty Morphin Pirate Power Rangers, which was the um which was the original uh book. Now I could levy a, a couple of different criticisms on this book as well, however, they can go over it. I have likened it. I've basically said that you know what this is. Um, this is the alternate universe Power Rangers because it's basically the original uh, Power Rangers, the original five. So it, well, excuse me, it started out as that. Now after Shattered Grid, there's a, a slightly different team and a different writer and, and things going on, which I still need to kind of sort of catch up on. But that's a whole other story. Um, it started off as the original five, but it is parts of it was written as if it was kind of today because there's like some stuff like, Hey, you want me to swipe right on that? I'm like, power Rangers came out in 93. <laughs> that, was that kind of talking that was barely cell phones. So <laughs> what the heck? So, uh, so, but doing further reading, you know, uh, and going through that, I just kind of like, it was like, okay, it's clear. This is kind of an alternate, um, 
universe because there was a lot of things happened that obviously didn't happen on the show but being a comic book you can play with things like that and this still could happen during the time frame of the the first season or first couple of seasons of the show um but kind of you know have some fun with it i'm i'm just surprised that when i i looked at that line next to your name i didn't see something that started with star and ended with either trek or wars you know ah, and, away. and i thought about that and yes i have been hot and heavy on both of those both of those books and they have been so here's the thing the, the stuff with the star trek stuff i've been liking a good bit of that but the, the, with the last couple of minis with the uh broken well the the last couple of minis ha have been decent but they haven't been like that first mirror universe mm. star one and yes the the, the uh, one that's going on right now with the transformers one has had some stuff which I, I may or may not bring up later i don't know um has had some stuff with it. and uh, yeah i'm forever about the star wars stuff but there's just been a lot of that there's been a lot of star wars <laughs> Like some of the stuff is is kind of unnecessary, and the main book is still good, and the Darth Vader book was great, and that's another one that that probably died too soon. Mm. But I mean, there's been two volumes of that, and they they kind of ran a course, and you can only do so much with that that book and that character. So, yeah, I I, I surprised myself by that one, but you know, kind of went with this. Uh, moving right along to. Most disappointing event, which uh, one of us didn't even use something comic related, but we're going. We're going well, to it is it. comic related, but. Oh well, yeah, I, I I I can only assume why, but I'm, and I, but anyway, we will get to that. So, unless you want to just go ahead and get into it right now, go for it. Okay, yeah. So <laughs> for me, the most disappointing event is Twitter, uh, like all of Twitter this year. Uh, like things have just, it's it's gotten bizarre. And crazy to the point where you've got creators attacking fans, you've got creators attacking creators, you've got creators attacking companies, you've got companies attacking creators, you've got, you know, uh, uh, like just recently you had, um, um, was it Gail Simone attacking Mike Barron, um, saying that he's, you know, some sort of like crazy out to get or whatever, and he wasn't even talking about her. Like he's just you know, talking in some thread about whatever, and she takes it personally, and then they end up having a Facebook chat, and it's like, okay, well, you know, there's some things we disagree on, but yeah, he wasn't trying to attack me, whatever, and it's like, like, just, like, get off Twitter. Like, just, like, everybody, just stay off Twitter. Like, shut down Twitter. Like, you know, everything, and, like, James Gunn uh, getting kicked off Guardians of the Galaxy from old tweets and everything like that. And like, man, that sucks. But then at the same time, he was going out and attacking people because they had 10 year old tweets that he didn't like. So he was going after them. So they turned it around on him. And then, you know, he ends up also getting fired. So it's just like uh, the only reason I still have a Twitter is because we promote stuff from the website. Right. But every time I open Twitter, like, I just, I, I wish I hadn't, you mm -hmm. know? Uh, and I've said dumb things. I've had dumb things said to me. I've had people threaten me. I've had people, you know, whatever all the time. I'm just, just Twitter, just Twitter is the worst thing that's happened period. But in comics like this past year, there have just been some really horrible, terrible things from everybody. Like nobody's clean on Twitter going back and forth, uh, on, on a lot of this stuff. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, my part of my new year's resolutions is to untwitter myself and you know of course you get sucked in you read something somewhere and whatever but still twitter is terrible it's bad it's the worst event to happen to comics so on that note i almost had because i actually had a note on this on yours um and it was saying what i basically said before you started was like this is, has nothing to do with comic books but then i thought about it i was like okay i i, I kind of felt like you, i knew where you were going but i was also going to say something similar because of the whole comic gate bull BS, because all of that stuff is crazy and stupid and nobody well, should be keeping and, comics. Well, uh, some of that, but, but, but like comics gate started as like, we want, we want Tony Stark, Iron Man. We want, you know, we want Captain America. We want Hulk. We want Thor. We want the characters we grew up on. If you want to introduce new characters, introduce new characters, but don't take away the characters that we like and we want to pay for in order to put out, you know, if you want to put out new characters, put out new characters. That's great. Except you know? that, that, that's how it 
started. But then, of course, yeah. someone comes in and says something dumb here, and someone comes in and says something dumb right. here, and then like, someone has yeah. to attacking people and all yeah, this. Yeah, someone stuff. has to shout back, and there's always like it, it becomes a thing where it's like, well, you said this, yeah, but you said this, yeah, but you said this, yeah, but you said this, and it's like neither side is clean on any of this stuff, you know. And it's, absolutely wrong in, in what they're believing in this one but you know, we can agree to disagree on that one well, but but like i said it where it started from was not anything of where people put it now you know mm -hmm. it's like, it's like with gamergate you know like that whole started because you're you're journalists but you're sleeping with the person that you're writing about but you're not telling anybody and you're hyping them up it seems like there should be some disclosure going on here and then yeah. it just exploded oh, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it always starts with something small that makes sense, but then someone co-ops it into something else and turns it into something completely different. And then someone's got to come in and shout down everybody who's there. So then every, someone's got to come in and shout down everybody the other way. And then people who don't even know what's going on have to come in and start shouting at each other. Oh my gosh, just like, go away. Yeah, I would disagree about how small some of that stuff was even in the beginning. But yeah, I mean, it did get to it. But I, I kind of agree it got to a crazy, crazy, crazy place, place with all of that. And it's still going on, which is really sad. But um, as far as most disappointing events go, I put, which granted, is, this is a fairly fresh one. And I probably, there probably could have been another one had I read a little bit more stuff. I put the best defense. Mm -hmm. Which I liked half of. I did too, but it didn't really like. It started off great with the Hulk stuff, and even like what was the other good issue? I guess um, the Dark Strange was, the issue was good. Yes, both of those the good starts to it. Well, start because actually the, whatever. Um, two good books, two fair to middling books, but nothing went went anywhere. Nothing came out of it, which not necessarily it had to, but I'm like. And and we spent whole time wondering about this one little thing that happened in each book that didn't really even pay off on anything. And it, it may someone <laughs> said it, stabs. Yeah, someone said it may tie into invaders somehow. Not so far. Well, yeah, yeah not right away, but maybe it leads into something down the line because they followed the Namor thread. I don't know if that. I mean, that's, that's the only part of invaders that invaders the, the thing that invaders is kind of going off right now. It does definitely go on. It definitely hems off of what's going on here but we will talk about that next next week so maybe possibly it, it gets into something that happens there but i think that is with the, the, the name of books especially it was like well they was like well with all the stuff with the avengers and then that and the stuff this was just like i don't know we don't really have anything really you know really going on with this character outside of this what's going on here so we're just going to keep going on with that line which is like i said still going on in other books so but outside of that best adventure currently i'm like i was i was kind of hoping this was going to pay off in some kind of more meaningful way and maybe inv invaders will but we won't know about that because they just started um that being said uh right. tim himself had uh uncanny x-men wait no i'm sorry um yeah that's right no that's right this uncanny is ongoing Right. Lauren, isn't this the same one he just mentioned like a couple yeah, of years? ongoing this is basically the, the that's kind of like an umbrella term for the event that's going on in the x books all the stuff that's leading up to but this number hadn't really started properly has it it has okay it has okay. um and for yourself for myself i've got a whole laundry list of uh, disappointing events, uh, specifically for Marvel. I have Infinity Countdown, Infinity Wars, Slash Warps, and Phoenix Resurrection. That all sucked. Hmm. Mm. So, oh, I don't know. I, I couldn't bring myself to even bring to, 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 um, to, to read Infinity War yet, and the only good things about it was was could have been the warps. I don't know, but I, once I go back and read that, we'll see. But yeah, I I, I would have probably agreed with you had I actually read it, because it didn't seem that was another one that seemed like didn't seem like it. Nothing came out of it. Absolutely. So, so uh, let's let's go to the positive side of of, of of events. So for most satisfying events for 2018, I have listed Spider Geddon, which just wrapped up and I enjoyed a lot of. So that was my most satisfying event for 2018. Dirt, how about you? 
and something that both Dirt and I did actually agree on. <laughs> yeah, and and I, I use the uh, adult version of this event, even though the the comics I bought were the censored version. Uh, but it's Doctor Strange Damnation. What? Not Tarnation? No, no. My copies say Tarnation, but I went with the original, <laughs> the, the OG title for this one. It was just a, a fun. Silly throwback, awesome story. So that that's the type of event that I want to see more of in 2019. Any case, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, you know what? I hadn't even thought about that, but yeah, I think it was. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. it was. So yeah, that was definitely a, a, a great, great event, uh, regardless of you know, with everything that happened within it. And you didn't necessarily have to read most of the tie-ins on that one, also, which was good. But some of them did kind of, you know. You still in, enjoyed some of the ones off of that. So I also said uh, Dr. Strange Damnation and also said, uh, well, I, I wanted to give a shout out. I'm not saying that this is actual, actual, but Shadow Grill was actually a better uh, event than I thought it would have been coming out, going into it. And Shadow Grid is the Power Rangers uh, event that had basically, uh, there's a multiverse thing that happened in it without going to, to it. Um, too too far into it, but there was a, a bunch of different rangers from both a bunch of different uh uh ranger shows slash timelines or whatever kind of come together and things happened and the big bad guy is someone who's familiar with uh the power rangers lore and it kind of and it's been great okay um and tim said uh extermination which was the x-men um the x-men um event dealing mostly with uh, the young time displaced original X-Men. And I guess he liked it. I don't know. I, I remember I, I finally read five and I'm like, okay, it ended and things kind of went back to a place and hey, guess what? Somebody's back for some strange reason. Right. Which I'm like, what? Really? How? But, you know, sure. So, he has a reason. Just, you know, I'm, I wouldn't say it was a bad, a bad one. But it was definitely an interesting read. Uh, next up, uh, event you event you're looking forward to. So I'm looking forward to War of the Realms. I I I guess there's some people who are skeptical as to how this is going to play out. Um, the reason why I'm looking forward to this is Jason Aaron's uh, long form story. In the pages of Thor, and now reaching out of from the pages of Thor into the rest of the Marvel U is so reminiscent of a lot of the the, the story beats from the the the, the seminal uh, Simonson run on Thor. That you know, I'm looking forward to seeing um, Aaron's take on this. Um, I really hope it's not Siege. You know, I really hope it's not um, ABX. Uh, no, 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 no. What was the other one? That was, no, what was the other one that was uh, Asgardian based? There was another one. There was Siege, and then there was Come um, on. Ragnarok. What are you? What are you? Where are you going? <laughs> no, where they were given Asgardian weapons. Which one was that? Fear, oh, fear, fear itself. There. See, I told you it was. There was more than one Asgardian based uh, yeah. event. So that fear itself. Great. Yeah, fear itself and Siege. Those are the ones that have primarily Asgardian. Um, uh, 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 elements to their stories. I really hope this is the best of those three. Hmm. Well, we'll see. Look, if War of the Realms doesn't have Thor Core in it, I'm boycotting. I'm, 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 <laughs> that's all I'm saying. I'm ju- I'm c- completely joking about that because I'm pretty sure that's not gonna have anything to do with it. Um, but yeah, the build the build up to it is is interesting. And, yeah, uh, I don't know. There's got to be a Thor frog in it before I'm gonna. I'm even gonna bother uh, looking. Thor, uh, as Thor Guardians. Frog is, exactly, Thor Frog is in uh, as Guardians of the Galaxy, so he's around. But so is Thunderstrike. So he's a dupa. Um, <laughs> Indy, so uh, Dirt, you're up. For oh yeah, what I'm looking forward to the most in 2019 is finally getting a finale to Doomsday Clock. You think that's not going to stretch into 2020? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> And they 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 pushed back uh, the next issue. Uh, we were talking about it in the Google chat uh, earlier. It was supposed to come out. It got pushed back to, I think it was January twenty third was when it was supposed to come out. 
Right. And then they pushed it back again now to February 13th. Wait, so how many are there supposed to be? 12. How many do we have so far? Eight. Oh, okay. So yeah, we'll probably get it within 2019. I mean, it's four issues. So you would think. You would hope. But I mean, the delay in between each issue seems to be getting exponential. So it's impacting the whole universe. Yeah. <laughs> the universe that has been going on for the last year or so the, with whatever that's well, like. yeah, but also um certain parts of the DC universe have been canceled or put on hold. Uh certain things have had to been had to be reworked. Uh Justice League was it Odyssey? Uh they had to scrap a couple issues and start over from the beginning and that whole um like other history of the DC universe or whatever it's called that had to be put on hold because apparently stuff from doomsday clock was going to affect some of this stuff and they had to either rewrite it or delay it. And once you delay something out like long enough, then it has to be completely reworked because so much of what was in your window of the story you were telling has fallen back. So, um, so yeah. So, I mean, Hopefully we'll get four issues out in a calendar year, but it's not entirely crazy to think maybe we won't. <laughs> so crazy. Um, it's like we're waiting on Ghost Rider 93, you know, and it it eventually came out, what, 30 years later? Yes, it definitely took double digit years. Or that one Captain America book that took a while. Was mm-hmm. it Captain America White? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. The Tim Sale book. That's correct. But um, to to, to push this along because I know we got time getting away from us, uh, hot and heavy here. Um, I just want a year. I, I a year with just comic book stories. That's that's what I want. That's just, can we get it without uh, every uh, an event every three or four months would be very very nice. I know we're not gonna get it. Um, the answer is no. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a it's a nice dream. And then Tim has um, whatever Scott Snyder is building up to in Justice League. Okay. Which I have to get caught up on Justice League because I kind of gave up for a while. I've I've got him in a box, but, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, Worst event tie-in book. I said anything Infinity Warps. Just looking at the stuff just made me not want to read it. And and Tim agreed with you on that one. Uh Uh-huh. Um, and my for myself, I had anything dealing with uh, Wolverine's re- return because that went way too long for no no reason. Although the first issue of Return of Wolverine was great, it had it had great artwork, right? And it had a, an interesting story, even though it didn't actually make a lot of sense. But you know, you would hope it might work somewhere. But then issue two came out and it was terrible. It's if- taking way too long to pan out. Taking way yeah. too long. Yeah, if you take a whole year to bring back a character that you know it's not the '90s anymore, folks, and we see what you're going back to. If you take a whole year to bring back a character that's already popular, you are doing way too much. Well, and not even like it's taken a it's taken a year for them to try to figure out like what to even do with him. Where you know, in, it seems like you know, ten years ago they would just do like a three issue or six issue miniseries that would come out you know, boom, boom, boom. And then he's right back into leading the new X-Men team or, you know, whatever. And instead it's like, we'll have somebody sitting around a campfire at the end of this Avengers book. And they'll see a guy in a cowboy hat with sideburns walking by. And that's going to be our appearance of Wolverine. And you're like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. So yeah, that's been pretty terrible. But for me, my worst event tie-in book was Namor the best defense we talked earlier that best defense kind of schizophrenic on half good half bad right but this particular issue it, it was like what no like this was not namor this was not until Marvel, the- Atlantis. Okay. like who I, I don't i don't even remember who wrote this but whoever it was it seemed like they just had a random story in their head and they just kind of shoehorned it to make it work as a Namor thing, but it just really it, it didn't it didn't sound like Namor, it didn't act like Namor, it didn't work like Namor. I want to say it was his dusk, but I maybe I'm probably wrong about that. And it's you know it's not even worth looking up. Um, 
So, and I think we're done with that anyway. Uh, so we go to best event tie-in book, and apparently there's a um, um, some two people really like the book, or a an event in general, which we'll allow it this time. So I'm going to go ahead and say first and say that Heroes in Crisis number one, because it had so much potential. Now I'm not saying look, we don't know how this whole event's going to turn out, but you cannot deny that Heroes in Heroes in Crisis number one had an awesome premise for a start. I, like, I can because I didn't like the character assassination of Booster Gold that happened in that first issue. Nobody cares about Booster Gold. <laughs> I care about Booster Gold. <laughs> <laughs> and because he's probably gonna I gotta he's either gonna come out smelling like a rose one because I, I know there is I think there is there there is rumor of a uh new blue and gold book or something going on with yeah. something so, so he's gonna be fine. Um but it was a great the, the whole thing starting out was was there's so much potential in it. Whether it's living up to it right now, hey, this time next year or this time 20, uh, 2020, uh, we'll see if that actually pans out. <laughs> but yeah, that that was my pick. Um, yeah, let's see, Dirt, you had. I put Death of the Inhumans number one, even though it ended up being a fake out, that first issue just blew yeah. you away. Um, mm -hmm. And, and probably for the same reason you like Heroes in Crisis, I like Death of the Inhumans because it looked like they were just laying waste to characters in the Marvel Universe left and right, just blowing them away, destroying them. You, you were like, they can't actually be doing this. And it appeared in number one that they were doing it. Right. And so I really enjoyed the heck out of that, even though we'll talk about the rest of that event here. In a, in a, <laughs> yeah. After a while. Um, and Agent 70, you and both Tim both had... Spider getting everything. Just, just, just. Okay. <laughs> Not trying to go with the whole event. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna let that loophole slide. Um, you got something else on that, or just that's, no, that's it. It. okay. Well, then we can move to most surprising event book tie-in to which I had <laughs> nothing, about nothing because. Because I couldn't think of anything that was that surprising. Well, I guess I honestly, actually, I, I take that back. Heroes in Crisis would would have probably been that one. Because like, wow, I didn't think they were gonna gonna kind of just like uh, they just said, just like I didn't think they were just gonna hold off, just slaughter a whole bunch of people, including a couple of people that actually got killed that are part, at least one of them's part of a main book or two. Um, so there's that. Uh, and you both had. Interesting, not the same book. For different reasons. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was going to say, not for the same line <laughs> of thinking. But we, yeah, we both had Death of Inhumans 4, um, which I hated because <laughs> they showed that none of these people were actually dead. Well, no, they there were some people who were dead, but well, the, it's not, not the key ones. characters, right? The the shocking, the ones that the the ones that had a little bit more um, sentimental value actually uh did make it out of uh death of inhumans alive and of course i'm referring to one uh lockjaw come on Which, look, look I'll, I'll grant you right. i like lockjaw and so i'm glad he's not dead and and out of the marvel universe but at the same time right. it's like it seemed like they had an actual series with cojones <laughs> and then they threw it out the window which basically boiled down to they killed off triton so oh okay nobody cares you know. uh, like that's one less aquatic character, right? Right. So, so can I ask, what was the twist that saved Larkjaw, or was it just the the whole main? Plot? It, it turned out that um, the Vox, who was the the villain who looked like the evil uh, Black Bolt that was right. destroying them, he wasn't actually killing them. He was sending them to um, was it was it a Cree factory? Yeah, something um, like that. that was that was like metamorphosizing all of the Inhumans into more versions of him. So they were basically building an army. Of evil black bolt in human clones, but with uh, different powers, right? Mm. So, so basically, it looked like this giant army um, of this one guy until you realize that those were all the people that you thought were dead were being mind wiped and turned into a clone amp. Wait, I feel like, and I feel like when this book was talked about, was there a, uh, a Heroes Reborn reference that one of you guys mentioned? I sure hope not. Uh, yeah, I was, I'm not sure. Well, it, okay. Well, I, I I feel like now that y'all say that, I feel like that that happened, but maybe I'm wrong. Regardless, worst gimmick or variant cover. 
Um, I just said anything dealing with with Wolverine's return. That was a <laughs> and and Dirt just mentioned the fact that hey, in the bunch of a back of book, they did like a you know an in credit scene with him. That was what really why? So that was dumb. Anyway, um, eight to seventy. I just don't like the fact that they put out so many variant covers for like every issue. So obviously they're raising the collectible value uh, of these comics, but there's just so many of them. And then what ends up happening is that, especially for some number one issues, they put out multiple variants and the one variant you really want is the one that's super rare. And that's the one that's impossible to get. Right. And that's kind of what I was going with, with mine here. I wrote that Marvel has random nothings every month for these variants. Cause a lot of times, well, I used to work at a store. I, I, Sure. Don't, now I've I've kind of stepped away, but if he goes on vacation, I'll still go, you know, help out and run. And I helped him move into his new location. But you know, he was talking about the stuff like with the Fantastic Four wedding. You know, there were like thirty-seven different variants or something among, and some of them, of course, were like if you order five hundred copies, you can get this one cover. But there were a lot of them where it was just like. You know, you were free to order as many as you wanted of some of these variants, but there were like 10 different covers. And when you're sitting there as a retailer, it's like, how the heck do you gauge adequately, like how much, who wants what? Because a lot of people don't know they want the variants until they see them. Right. Most people don't really order in advance like they should. Um, but even then, Marvel will do some where it's like, um, what, what I actually picked for my my favorite variant of the year is one I'll never own because it was a one in 250. Mm. So, you know, you're going to have to spend 250 bucks most likely from somebody to get it. Some people might discount it at like uh, 175. That's great. Right. I'm still buying the variant at that cost. But it's like they always have this need. The one thing I like about DC and a lot of their variants is they have a regular cover and a variant cover and they're both free to order. And you can order as many as you want. It's just basically two different covers. I always get the B covers of everything. You know, it's just like I like having the the more artwork, and it's you know less of the title on the on the cover. It just looks nice. But you can order whichever one in as many copies as you want. Marvel is still doing this thing where it's like the one in five, the one in seven, the one in ten, the one in twelve, the one in fifteen, the one in twenty, the one in twenty-five, the one in thirty-five, the one in fifty, the one in sixty, the one in seventy-five, the one in ninety, the one in one hundred. Like it just goes on and on and on. It really. Does. Yeah, and if you look at the comics industry anymore, you know nobody's buying two hundred and fifty thousand copies of some of these comics anymore. Like, you may have one person that gets that one variant, and it'll make it insanely uh, skyrocket in value over the years. But I mean, really, so many of these books just aren't selling. Where you're not ordering sixty copies and it's like, well, if I order five more, I get this variant and it might be worth something. Like nobody's really ordering along those lines, which was the whole point of those variants in the first place. And not a lot of those books are being are returnable from what, from what I understand. Oh yeah, the variants, yeah, none of them will be if you yeah. order them from Diamond, yeah. So that's just ridiculous. Um Tim did not have anything for that one or this next one, but I guess playing off of wait, oh, I'm sorry, we, we're actually past. Oh no, we're not finishing. Um, but Tim didn't know that one. Um, I just said connecting covers because going back to the Marvel Handbook, I've been doing. Uh, I can't think of anything specific from last year, but there's been a couple I remember seeing that was like, okay, excuse me, that was cool, but it also kind of plays into what you guys just said. So that's you know, right. Um, so we are now up to well, no, to we're best, we, were, we were still doing best gimmick or variant, so we went from worst to best. Right. And for me, my the my favorite the, the books that I actually went and looked for they weren't hard to find, they weren't like super rare or anything. But the Fantastic Four number one variants that were on the easier side to get, I really yeah. liked. Like, there was a Quesada variant, and then there was the uh. The variant that kind of made up the uh, the uh, a poster uh, image that Arthur Adams did. So you know between issues number one and two, and so I enjoyed getting those. And they even put out like a Mike Wieringo, um, uh, uh, it was, I think it was a Reed and Sue cover for uh, Fantastic Four number one. So actually, you know, I, I picked that one up as well. So I actually liked the the variant that they put out for that. Yeah, but 
I, I kind of feel like in some of those situations, instead of putting out 37 variants on issue number one, right. it, I'd rather that they had an A cover and a B cover. And the B cover would be that like history of the Fantastic Four variant. And they just do one for the first 10 issues. So for the first 10 issues, you could say, sure. I want that history of the FF variant instead of the regular cover and just have it free to order, you know, as opposed to, you know, maybe you have to pay twenty four ninety nine for some of these variants when you're exactly. buying your, your shop. Well, I mean, you, I mean uh, I'm, I'm sure you probably saw stacks of the individual FF member covers. You know, you could get, well, I think it was like the Stanley Lau um, individual, like the the, the, the Torch, uh, Invisible Woman, Reed, and Thing. So you could get all four members. And I'm like, what do you, what, what do I need this for? So you want to buy four copies of the same book just to get this, God. get these portraits instead of doing it as the first four issues. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, uh, yeah. My favorite variant was actually for a book I hated. <laughs> uh, which is interesting. Um, but this was the uh, Mike Mignola Namor. Uh, they call it the Hidden Gem variant. Um, and so this was actually a new piece of uh, Mike Mignola. Uh, well, actually, it's it's not new. It's an old piece, but I believe it's previously unpublished. Mm. So this is actually from 87, I believe it was. Right. So they found this old piece of artwork that they put as the new variant. Um the problem is, though, uh, if you want to order this one, uh, the list price right now is at $200.50, uh, but you can get it at a discount of $120.30. Well, it's at Midtown. But, yeah, at Midtown. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to pay $120 just for a variant. Yeah, they did that with uh, some of the uh, the Mike Zek covers for uh, the Punisher number one that came out, too. Mm. Didn't they do something like that with the Tony Stark book that just came out? Yeah, with uh, like previously unreleased art or like recolored art. Yeah, so. I'm not sure. Yeah. But um, there is that. And like I said uh, previously, Tim did not have anything for that. So we're going to move on to the MDP, most disappointing publisher. Um, Our most disappointing publisher was Marvel because there's so many events that fell absolutely flat. With IDW a close second, um, uh, for not publishing more gem comics for my sister. <laughs> I feel like they kind of did. They they did a whole lot. I don't know. Do you think they ran their course. Yeah, probably. And as the person who was some for some reason reading those some of those books, I'm like, I don't. That some of it was unnecessary. Anywho, I kind of said Marvel. For a slightly similar reason, but also because they they then there's some stuff behind the scenes that they was kind of poor form, such as the the firing of a couple of um and canceling of a book uh, a couple of books that was well excuse me one book so one book still actually coming the, but the the canceling of a couple of writers and for kind of silly reasons and that being Chelsea Kane and uh, Mike uh, uh, excuse me Chuck Wendick. For it's actually similar the same reason, but also with the the events and stuff that's been going on, and you know it's like way too many and too much. It's like and the whole like five and seven dollars for number one books is also kind of crazy. Mm. So yeah, that's ridiculous. And Mr. Dirt, you have I actually have Boom Studios, um, and this was again working in a shop. Um, Boom Studios puts out very little that really sells anymore. Um, so many of their books just sit on the shelf. IDW is kind of the same way, but for me, Boom is so disappointing because if you go back a couple years, uh, so many of the comics I was buying for my kids were from Boom um, because they were doing the the cars and the Toy Story and the Wally -E and the. Right. You know the, the type of stuff that that the kids like. They do gumball, so I'll give them credit on that one. Um, but but like they they're doing the labyrinth comic, and it's not very good. It's one of those that again I'm buying because I like the license and because of the momentum that I've bought so many, and I'm just waiting for them to wrap it up. Um, but it's it's not quality, um, and so many of the books coming out from Boom just don't sell. And and it's gotten to the point where the store orders a copy. Mm -hmm. just so they can say 
we carry their stuff. There's a copy of Giant Days if anybody wants to get it. But of course, there's eight months of unpurchased copies of Giant Days sitting on the shelf. And nobody pulling it. Yeah. Oh. So um, Boom has just kind of become this sort of black hole where it's like they make books, but so many of them nobody just pays attention to and nobody cares about. Which is a shame, uh, considering they bought Archaea, which used to do great, uh, high-quality, top-of-the-line hardcover books several years ago. They became part of Boom, and now it's like they put out a couple licensed books a year, and that's about it. And, and they're not even doing the hardcovers, the prestige books that Archaea was known for you know, back in the Mouse day. Guard. Right, right. And Mouse Guard, even if it comes out, they'll give it four issues. They have it come out every other month, but he's only allowed to do a series like every two years or right. something like that. Where it's like, if you know David Peterson, uh, like he's probably got 200 pages of unpublished mouse guard just sitting in a drawer waiting for the opportunity to put it in print. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking at some point this contract will expire. He'll self-publish or take it to image or something like that. And then you'll see an explosion of stuff. But yeah, so, so boom is my most disappointing. Okay. So uh, go to the for that. So we're going to go to now the flip side of that with the MVP, the most valuable publisher, <laughs> which oddly enough is the same as disappointing publisher for for me. Uh, yeah, that's right. And it's I kind cool. of yeah, I kind of wanted to go down that road, and uh, uh, what I probably what I put down is probably sound seems contrarian but not necessarily but why why marvel well for the reasons that i state it's because it's the it's still the market leader for better and for worse yeah so i i chose marvel again as uh the most valuable just because again it is the biggest um it actually ate into image and idw this past year so idw and image have shrunk while marvel grew um, Marvel is the biggest publisher. They put out the most units and they make the most dollars. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, the market shrank again. Uh, top 300 comic sales this year uh, is down 3% in units. Uh, all comics sold by Diamond is down 6% in units again this year. And that's on top of there were losses in 2017 where the, where the industry shrunk. Um, and now it shrunk again. So they are the industry leader. They are the biggest, most prolific, and most profitable of a market that's getting smaller year by year. Uh, yeah, but it's not going anywhere. But uh, I, I want to say you may have seen the same article I did. There was an article that was recently came out about like um, Marvel was the top publisher, but DC had like the best selling book. Yeah. So, well, I, I just went to, uh, there's a website called Comicron. Right. Um, which which actually goes through all the sales numbers and everything and figure out units and numbers. Action Comics was number one. Right. Um, but it was also a seven ninety nine book. So it it was a, a high priced book and it had a ton of variants. Um and it was the first comic to ever reach a thousand issues. So it was a big milestone thing. Um so that was really big for DC. Um, but you know, again, Marvel uh, still overall, they publish more books in general and made more money right uh and for myself tim didn't have anything down for that one and for myself like i said i almost went with marvel myself because that's pretty much the majority of books i read and there's been a lot there and it's still for all the other stuff going on yeah there's still stuff there but um i kind of want to give it the the shout out to either image and or uh lions forge both of whom i have i've been reading books from and sometimes it is a matter of quantity or excuse me quality over quantity uh, you know, you can have like one or two books that that's just some uh, some quality reading, which Image uh, has, especially last year, a couple of them from me has had uh, Lions Forge. I'll show you, but I'm still kind of a little bit behind on some of that Lion Forge, but specifically the Catalyst, Catalyst Prime stuff. Where I'm talking of specifically, but um, which is why I pretty much chose Image for that one. Um, and now, folks, we're it's all come down to these last couple, those last one, which I we might need to redo this one because I don't remember us having two different for the same category. 
two different sections for this category. I can't remember what this other section was, but clicks of the year. We're we're kind of down to it. Um, and I don't know why we have what what is going on here. <laughs> I don't know why there were two, but I was happy to have two slots. Exactly, I was happy to have two slots. Well, I think that was supposed to be another category, and I don't, I don't think we could decide on which one. But whatever, we'll let it go for this year until we figure out what that, whatever that one was. Um, so to start off, Tim has Amazing Spider-Man eight hundred, which I echo that sentiment. Which which what was that one? I don't remember. That was uh, the finale, basically, you know, the the penultimate for uh, Dan Slot, where you know you're dealing with the uh, the culmination of the Red Goblin story, and um, there was just a lot going on. Obviously, it was the uh, you know the big anniversary issue. Hmm. Okay, but you also have uh, Fantastic Four number five. That's the great wedding issue that actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Dirt wasn't, here for, Dirt wasn't and, on that show. It yeah. actually happened. Yeah. Um. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to cheat a little bit because one, I'm going to go with. Um, I didn't. I totally forgot about this. Um, Damnation. Start Doctor Strange. Damnation number one. That is one of mine. Uh, because I couldn't really think of anything. Like that was a bunch of good books last year. Um, but, and I think I also kind of want to go with Echo Dirt, or one of Dirt's, I should say, with Mr. Miracle uh, number 11. Yeah, so the when I first filled it out, issue. well, I was what? going to say, when I, I first full, filled it out, I put Mr. Miracle 12, mm -hmm. right? Because that was the end of the series. Right. But then I went back and I was like, no, 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 I didn't really like 12. <laughs> yeah, you, you had issues with that one. But it's 11, 11 was great. 11 was the veggie tray, dark side, uh, the, the baby booping them on the nose. Yep. Uh, uh, you know, the, the, the battle to, to screw over dark side and, and forge a new history for the fourth world. I thought it was great. Um, and it was like, wow, how are they going to follow this up? And then they did a 12 and 12 stank. But mm. overall, I liked the series, Mr. Miracle. Um, and 11 was just the best issue of that and it, you know plus any uh comic that's going to give you 38 panels of a veggie tray throughout the story uh there's got to be something to it yeah so um so on that note i'm going to say that i want to say that clicks of that cl the second clicks of the year might have been for series but we never really hashed out whether that was the case or not so i regardless of what that is going to be or has been i'm going to go say it and say mr miracle because let's face it, just the, the veggie tray alone was one thing, but up until twelve, there was a whole lot of craziness and and good stuff in that series. Yeah, and there was a whole lot of what's real, what's not real. Is this in his head? What was in the past? What was in the future? You know, like they really played with you a lot of different ways. You weren't really sure what you were reading uh, until you got to the end there. So. It was a lot of fun. And again, I love the artwork. Mitch Gerards, that's the artist. Mm -hmm. uh, I love his stuff. Uh, it's not for everybody, but it is for me. Indeed. And then my other click of the year, since we had two slots, nah. um, was Gideon Falls number six, which I likened to the, the season finale of the first season. And then season two started with uh, issue seven. So with six is where we found out that these two different stories, one happening in a small town in the country and what happening in this big metropolis we find out that they are both gideon falls but we don't understand the connection we don't know if it's different universes different times you know how this all plays together but that was your first look into the fact that that these are connected in some greater way other than just people having visions of this evil black barn that that somehow evil possesses uh, and gets into people's heads and it really added a new fun dynamic to the storyline so gideon falls six was was you know like like whoa that blew me away they took time off before they came back uh for seven so it was a a season finale and it was a great one remember multiple man it was fun yeah, yeah, boy, good times we had last year. Um, 
Oh yeah, Batman White Knight was last year also, wasn't it? Jesus, I forgot about that. Anyway, you know what? We're, 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 hey, there was a lot of good stuff. Like, so, and I said I don't think Tim put anything down for his except for that Amazing Spider-Man number eight hundred. So cool. Um, last but not least, we have New Year's comics resolutions, and um, yeah, no surprise that that there's just you know <laughs> what's old is new again. I guess. <laughs> Because I can echo this, this sentiment that both you guys had uh, resoundingly. In fact, we talked about it in in a length before prior to the show. So, and that was we have to sort our boxes of comics that are not in any sort of order. Hmm. Which ultimately, I think we all, I'm sure we all definitely have to do that. In fact, I remember I, I did a tweet about that like a couple of weeks ago. I was like, because I was I had started doing that thing and didn't get that far. And it, and it just occurred to me, actually, as we were sitting here talking, that I have a bunch of these uh, comic book of the month club. Uh, I, I still have a bunch of these oh, yeah. that have the, the loose issues in them that I need to find homes for. Uh, so even these need to be uh, filed. Still- yeah, I'm going to have to. Are you uh, still doing that? Yeah, I am. I am. Uh, you know, you do get, uh, you know, some some fun stuff, Unknown Soldier. Wow. Old books thrown in there from time to time it's always good you get random stuff like quasar oh wow how long has it been since you read some quasar and and they're still trying to you know if they if they give you one they try to give you you know two or three of the same series so you've got a little bit of a storyline sometimes you can get uh a nice little gem in there like batman lonely place of dying oh i i that's a isn't that a perez cover uh it is it is indeed i remember that um so yeah and then you know occasionally you do get like the random oh look it's the poison ivy series from last year oh the recent one by amy chu all right uh, yeah i was i was not a fan of that series overall uh, but... poison, ivy. poison ivy um but yeah but i was just thinking i've got a bunch of these still though that i have to sort through and you know i can see i've got a couple of them sitting over there and i've got a couple of them sitting over there where it's <laughs> It's like I get them and I read one or two of them and then I put them back in the box. It's like, all right, I got to deal with them at some point. And now I've got boxes of this stuff that I have to go through and sort and then find boxes to put that stuff into to sort them all. Does and it then bring find joy? The shout out to Marie Kondo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So, yes, indeed. So that 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 is pretty much a, a, a thing on auto plates. But for me, myself, I also said, well, I made a sorting joke after that and almost, yeah, but regardless, we were the other way. Uh, I said, get to know more pencilers because that was a really, really hard category to kind of come across. Um, but there's definitely the sorting thing that needs to happen. And for Tim, who he said that, um, make sure I pick clicks of the week ahead of time. How about making the show once in a while, Tim? <laughs> Shot fire is the only time I'm using the uh the the whatchamacallit the uh the, the sound effects tonight other than a few other instances. Shots fired. Hmm. Oh my goodness. Indeed. And that folks is 2018 in a nutshell. Um I was going to say actually, you know what? Hey, can you get can you bust out an ad real quick? I the, will. So as always, when we gotta go quick. We uh, ask you to help keep our podcast free by shopping at Amazon. Visit cspn.us, then click the Keep Our Podcast Free link at the top of the page. From there, scroll down and click on the Amazon link to shop. Purchase items from Amazon as you normally would, whether it's books, music, electronics, jewelry, apparel, or toys. For every purchase made on Amazon through our link, Amazon sends the CSPN a payment... That helps us keep the Comic Book Chronicles free for our listeners at no extra cost to you. Amazon.com through CSPN.us. Do it today. All right. And folks, that is it. And as you can see here, this is our sheet of clicks of the year because you know this this is this is this is the year as it was somewhat. Some of it kind of shaped something, some of it didn't. But Thank you for coming out, folks, 
for this here show. We will be back uh, next week for a regular episode of in of uh, the Cumber Chronicles, and we'll probably have two 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 years, two month, uh, two Lord, two weeks worth of stuff. It is like folks, my friend, and I'm usually the one that's up all night, so go figure. Um, with that, AJ underscore seventy Instagram, Twitter, go check them out there. PC and underscore dirt Twitter. Um, don't check me out. Don't check me out. Especially don't check me out on Twitter. Okay. Well, check out his Twitter. Popculturenetwork.com. Pop, for, uh, pop. Well, wait. He's still going to be doing Pop Culture Net on Twitter because he's, he's got stuff to do. Check out his various stuff on the, on his website. That new kid, Uh, I need comics.com. All the stuff over there, whatever that buying substitute is going to be, you know the deal is going, whatever it is. Um, but, 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 uh, Tim. Tim O G G nine eight on Twitter, uh, CBR where he's writing his face off on that. Dclicknation.com. That's D K L I Q N A T I O N. And of course, uh, Dclicknation Twitter and CB Cron on Twitter. For myself, Roddy Cat on Twitter. Uh, News Nurse Need on Twitter. Uh, there's the News Nurse Need Reddit also. There's CB Caps Instagram. You go check me out over there. And you know, I'm here, there, and everywhere. Check me out on Xbox Live and PS4. No, you don't know. <laughs> All of that. Um, CSPN.us. That's that is the phrase that pays. That's where we are, folks. Um, uh, go check it out with this this show and other shows on the network. Uh, shout that USP CSPN Ian may or may not be up. I have no idea, but go over there and see if uh, that lightens up and go. For merch for this show and other shows, but you can definitely get this podcast over on cspn.us and you check out any subsequent links there. Uh, and you can subscribe to said podcast on Google Play, iTunes, Spotify, all those good places, and the SoundCloud link. And with that, folks, we have come to the end of the show. Thank you. Good night. Have a great 2019. And we will see you this time next year for another slobber knocker. I don't know. Bye now. Hey. Would you believe it's, it's Dr. Doom? What's on your evil mind? Oh,